Hi, hello and welcome in our video. In this short video, I have a very simple agenda. I would like to show you how can you work with rich text formatting, how can you work with tables and how can you work with artifact history. Let's not waste any time and we can jump right to the exercises. Let's start easy and simple with rich text formatting and we'll spend just a couple of seconds on this one. When you click on this pencil right here, you are brought to editing mode and of course you can make any change to this artifact. But you also can change font, for example. You have many different options right here. So for example, again, I will change font to something different like Tahoma. I will change font size to 16. I will make it bold or at least part of it. And part of it I will make underline and italics. I can also use, for example, different color of the text or color of the background of the text. I can use different alignments. So, for example, I would like to align to center. And I would like to use some bullet points or list. So, for example, clicking here, option one option two and this section i would like to align to the right oh sorry to the left <laughs> okay and if you would like to have numbered list option three option four so you see you have many different options that are pretty much standard to any word document what may be important for you to know is that changes are saved automatically. So as soon as I will jump out of this artifact, for example, I will click here, everything is saved. But it's of course great that changes are saved automatically, but at the same time, unfortunately, there is no simple undo option. So if you would like to revert the changes, you would need to spend a little time to revert change manually one by one, until you have the original artifact. Making formatting changes is easy, straightforward, and probably don't bring any unnecessary risks. But what if you would like to revert the changes, but in addition to changes in the format, you also made changes in the content of the artifact? Or what if you would like to track the changes of the artifact throughout its lifetime? Then you would need additional feature, and that's artifact history. To view artifact history, I will also make change with another account. For example, I will add change to right here, jumped out of the artifact, it's automatically saved. And right now we can see how artifact history is done. To view artifact history, just navigate here, click on open artifact and click on open artifact history. We are brought to the audit history of this artifact and you can see right away that we have a couple of changes here. Those three changes here are from me just playing with this artifact when setting up the environment and those two changes are important for our training. You see that they are ordered from the latest one to the oldest one. So let's see the latest change. When clicking on show changes, you see that this change too was added to this content. You can also see that Peter, so my demo account, modified this resource on 1351.37 on June 7th. Couple minutes before, Igor made those changes, so everything here was changed. If I would like to see how artifact looked before, I can look here again. Everything I did is just delete make any change. Clicking on the change before, you see I added make any change to this artifact. And clicking down here, you see this is when artifact was created. So in this one view, we see lifetime of this artifact from creation to the latest change. I would like to show you one more important feature with just one button. You see, we have those squares right here. You can go change by change. So those are four changes today and one change yesterday. Let's jump back to 
this section. So I would like to have my artifact in the old form without formatting with this text, make any change. So I will choose this square right here. You see right now, this is highlighted. This is the correct one. I can go up here and click on restore. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Now we can jump out and you see, excellent. Right now, my requirement is restored to the original version. So although there is no undo button, you in fact can view artifact history, select the right version of the artifact and jump back to that version. All right, let's continue with including tables. So if you would like to include table, you can create new artifact or edit old artifact and include new table here. I will create new artifact and to create table, just click on insert, click on table and choose number of rows and columns that is appropriate for your use case. I will choose four rows and two columns. Okay. And you see we have empty table here right away. And it probably goes without saying that you can edit this table in pretty much exactly the same way as you can do in any other table editor. So for example, if you would like to merge those cells, you can right click, go to cell and click on merge. And what I did, I asked ChatGPT to create any funny table. So this was his response. He created table hilarious animal facts. And to this heading, he added animal. To this heading, he added fun fact. And then he added couple of animals. So I will add it right away. All right, so I just copy pasted some information about sloth and dolphin from ChatGPT. And this is his idea of funny table. But from editing perspective, we can make those fields as bold. We can again align. We can also align this one. We can go and, for example, to cell, cell properties, and we can change, for example, background color, like this to medium blue, and also border color to orange. And I don't like this one, so I will change it to white. So once again, not going to uh, any feature and possibility, if you would like to explore how you can edit this table, just right click, go to cell or go to the table properties and explore what are the options. Just one additional information to the tables by right clicking and selecting table properties. What may be important for you to know is that you can name this table. So going to advanced and here to caption, you can name this table. I will name it as table one and the name of the table. Excellent. Okay. Why it may be important? Because if you would be creating reports somewhere down the line, this name of this table may help you very much when creating your report. So that's just a little tip and trick. You, you don't have to name your tables. It's uh, okay also without any name, but it may help you when you will be creating reports. There is just one more thing I would like to cover in this video, and that's how you can create link to the artifact. And then it's not about linking artifact together. No, that's a complete separate topic about traceability and linking. But this is about how you can navigate to this specific artifact. So you can, for example, share it with your colleague and he can check it, review it, changes, etc. To do this, you can click here, share link to artifact, and just copy it. I will go to new tab. And you see, I am brought directly to this artifact. And it's simple but pretty neat feature because if you are working in a module with thousands of artifacts, it's great that you can point and navigate to one specific artifact and it will be much easier for your colleagues to find it and work with this specific artifact. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. 
I really hope it was informative for you and I hope to see you in our next videos.